Well folks, another Talking Head video because this time I want to show you what I've done with my new oh, upgraded dashboard display. Yes, so actually first off, let me turn those lights off because they're annoying. Uh, so first of all, you might recall from, I don't know when it was, a couple of years ago now, I put together a Raspberry Pi dashboard with a seven inch Raspberry Pi official touchscreen display to hook into the Mega Squirt to kind of effectively run Tuna Studio with a full screen dashboard rather than the typical cluster you'd run on a standard car. Um, this car, I don't really need a lot of the parts that you'd see on a standard cluster or more to point, I like the value of customizing all the gauges that I can run so I can display on here things like uh, oil pressure, coolant temperature, and also throw up nice big bright red warnings if anything goes wrong, which obviously the standard cluster with just some mechanical uh, dials can't do. So hence why I put together the, put together the Raspberry Pi. Uh, that's been going great, really had no issues with it for the most part since it's been sort of initially put together. However, I kind of got itching for a bigger screen, basically, and did some Googling and hunting around and thought I'd try this out and see if it works, but I didn't want to invest too much time or money into it. Um, so most of everything that runs in the background hasn't changed. However, I managed to find myself a 10-inch uh, display to fit in place of where the, the old 7-inch used to live. Uh, it's not a screen and it's not touch screen like the old one was. It's, a, it's kind of just a display panel or an LCD panel with a separate driver board. So the board is not like a, a computer screen, for example, where you've got kind of a plastic bezel with all the plugs go in the back of it and it's all a contained unit. This is just a display panel with like the metal edging and on the back, it certainly doesn't look pretty. Um, and the driver board, the thing that kind of accepts all the plugs, uh, is a separate piece. It runs a ribbon cable onto the display. So it's a little bit a little bit rudimentary, perhaps, or it's just, it's not like a, a consumer product that you typically use. Anyway, long story short, bought that, hooked it all up. It worked pretty much out of the box, which is great. Uh, although, it took a bit of finagling to get it to fit. Uh, and I thought I'd show you that quickly as well before we boot this baby up. So it's now a 10 inch display rather than the old seven inch, no longer touchscreen. Hello. Um, and it fills out this panel quite extensively, uh, a lot bigger than the old one was. The bezels are much smaller as well, which is a nice uh, upgrade. It's actually a bit taller than any, than I would like. It would be nice to be extra wide um, because we lose a little bit across the bottom, bottom here, and a little bit of the screen can't quite be seen across the top, but it's not too bad. If it was extra wide, it'd actually probably fit even better, but you make do with what you can find. Um, I'll take the hood off. I've just loosely put it here to make it easy to get off whilst we talk. And come on, there's a cable stuck, there we go. So to mount this guy up, the old one used to, I had some 3D printed brackets that attached to the screen. The screen had um, a threaded boss on them, so they were kind of handy. This one doesn't have that, so I've made a new bracket in the back there. I'll throw some footage up now showing you that. There's a new bracket in the back here attaching to the screen and then the Raspberry Pi and its separate driver board all mount to that bracket and then all the cables feed in. Thankfully this display accepts a standard micro USB just like the Raspberry Pi does for its power source which is really handy. It meant I could use the existing cables I was using for the old display um, and it obviously runs off that 5 volt input. Uh, that was one of the things when you're looking for a screen like this you need something that can easily be powered. 12 volt or 5 volt would be ideal Given I was already using a 5 volt display, uh, this one also being 5 volt and also ac accepting the same existing cable meant less work for me. So that was handy. Um, the display uses a full size standard HDMI cable to run from the display to the Pi. And that's how I get my video output from the screen or from the Pi to the screen. Um, the old touch screen used a sort of proprietary ribbon cable or something. Um, whereas this one doesn't need that. 
Uh, but the standard HDMI is is certainly a convenient thing to use anyway. Um, and other than that, it plugged in and worked straight away. The I think the resolutions. Oh, I don't recall exactly, 1280 by maybe 720 high or something like that. So it's not super high res, but uh, for this purpose I don't think that's a problem. We're not doing 4K gaming in the car. Um, and let me show you the boot up. So if I power on the car, flick on the power for the Pi, it takes around about a minute to go from dead to showing the actual dashboard. So. We boot up, obviously Raspberry Pi is, runs on a um, kind of Linux based OS. So we see all the typical Linuxy words that can come up. Um, ignore the lightning bolt up here, please. Yes, I know it means that there's something to do with low voltage, but I don't know, I'm running like a high amperage, full five volt DC converter and it still shows up. I've got separate power sources for the Pi and the screen and it still shows up. If I try and plug this into my wall in the house, using a full 3 amp like Samsung high output charger, it still comes up. So I don't know why I get that lightning bolt, but it seems to not impact the operation of the screen so or all the, uh, the Pi, so I'm not too worried about that. So we've got our Tunis Studio booting up. Sorry about the reflections, not much I can do about that, obviously. And so as you can see in all the warbling I've just done, it hasn't taken too long for this to boot up. Tunis Studio, I've coded to auto start on uh, boot up and then once it's up and running, it does a check, connects to the ECU and then eventually it flicks itself to full screen automatically. I think once it's done the kind of tune comparison. So every time it boots, it checks that the tune on the Pi matches the tune in the actual ECU, which is kind of cool. Um, and there you go, she's up and running. I'm using the same dashboard I was using before, the same cluster design. Uh, just a bigger screen, basically. I should add, if you are interested in these dash cluster designs for Tuna Studio, for the Megasquirt, I have a website called tunastudio-boards.com where I publish them there for you to download, all for free. You don't have to do anything, you just download them. Click the link and I think you have to put in your email address so that you can, it emails you the link so you can download it. Um, but yeah, they're free, so. Just another way of trying to share the, the cool stuff with other people. Now, if we try and install this cluster cover thingy. It's not quite on right. There we go. There we go. There we go. She's happy now, I think. Yeah. Oh, not quite right at the back. I don't know. Anyway, close enough. Um, you can see, I can see most of the screen still okay. There is a little bit cropped off sort of at the top and the bottom but uh, I might readjust the screen at some point but for now it's uh, it's pretty good it's pretty good I'm quite happy with the larger screen much bigger and brighter um, we'll see how it goes out on track hopefully it performs okay and I don't get any weird issues I don't know overheating or something might be a thing but yeah uh, she's looking good you might have noticed I've done some weird shit with the top hood cover thing Firstly, because the screen's so big, I actually had to make relief holes in the top of the hood because uh, it just pokes through or it just was touching this, this piece. So I made holes and then made little covers to kind of tidy it up with some 3D printed pieces so they're equal shape, the same shape on both sides, they're just mirrored. Uh, and that turned out relatively okay. It's not, yeah, I get it. It's, you know, it's kind of messed with the aesthetic of the cluster a little bit, but eh, whatever. Big screen compromises, uh, and then I also tried. I found some of this like it's kind of a felted or flocked type adhesive backed. Um, it's like a vinyl, um, so it's a stick-on sheet of this sort of flocked panel or flocked sheeting. So it's got that sort of soft felted feel to it. Um, I just wanted to just give that a go, put it on the dash, and see how it performed. If it kind of helped with glare and things, because obviously. Flock dashes are pretty cool, common thing in like rally cars and stuff. Really hard to use this stuff because it's a adhesive backed kind of vinyl. It doesn't want to wrap around the curves, compound curves of the dashboard or anything. So very hard to install into here. You've got a lot of, I've got a lot of folds and little cuts and things to try and get it to fit, but eh, it was just an experiment to see if I liked it and to see how it fit. And I've only sort of done this top part just to give it a bit of a go and if it works out well, maybe I'll consider flocking the whole dash, 
properly or looking into another product that can do the same thing. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's the new dash. I'll include a link in the description thingy for the screen if you want it. Um, and also maybe I'll publish the file. I mean, the, the 3D printer file for the mounting bracket is very bespoke to my per specific purpose. So probably not useful for other people out there, but I can publish it if anyone wants it, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, a little bit of a project, a little bit of farting around, probably took three or four goes to get the mounting bracket working at the back there. But otherwise, it looks pretty cool. Pretty happy with it. We'll see how it goes out on track. Hopefully it all works fine. I'm not too bothered by not having touch screen anymore. I didn't use touch before. Um, generally when I'm driving this, I'm not tuning it, you know? Kind of makes sense, right? So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.